Alberta Commercial Operators License Practice Test Part 1, Audio What conditions must an Alberta Safety Fitness Certificate meet in order for it to be acknowledged in other Canadian jurisdictions? A. The registered vehicle must have Alberta plates. B. The carrier must declare that they are a federal company. C. The registered vehicle must have Alberta plates or the carrier must declare that they are a federal company. D. The registered vehicle must have Alberta plates and the carrier must declare that they are a federal company. The answer is D. The registered vehicle must have Alberta plates and the carrier must declare that they are a federal company. What does the official definition of a semi-trailer exclude? A. It has axles only at or near its rear end. B. It has axles either at its front or rear ends. C. While being towed, it is supported at its front end by the truck tractor or the immediately preceding trailer. D. When connected to the truck tractor or preceding trailer, it is connected by means of a kingpin and a fifth wheel. The answer is B. It has axles either at its front or rear ends. Which of the following statements about federal hours of service regulations is correct? A. In each day a driver must take 10 hours of consecutive off-duty time. B. The federal regulations are less restrictive than the Alberta regulations. C. During a work shift a driver is not permitted to drive more than 13 hours. D. Drivers can change between cycle 1 and cycle 2 as long as they notify their carrier. The answer is C. During a work shift a driver is not permitted to drive more than 13 hours. Which of the following is required for a Class 5 license to be upgraded to a Class 4 license? A. Knowledge Test B. Vision Assessment C. Medical Form Completed by a Doctor D. All the Above The answer is D. D. All the Above Which of the following conditions, according to Alberta Hours of Service legislation, would prevent a driver from driving? A. If road conditions are dangerous. B. If he, she has already been on duty for 15 hours. C. If he, she has had more than three work shifts that week. D. If he, she has already driven 10 hours during that shift. The answer is B. If he, she has already been on duty for 15 hours. When a driver successfully completes an approved Alberta Air Brake course through an authorized organization, Q. Endorsement is added to his or her which driver's license? A. Class 3 B. Class 1 C. Class 2 D. All the above The answer is D. All the above What distinguishes an A train from a C train? A. An A train has an additional articulation point. B. An A train has a self-steering axle, but a C train does not. C. An C train has only one pintle hitch, but an A train has two. D. A C train does not use an independent converter, but an A train does. The answer is A. An A train has an additional articulation point. What kind of license requires eligibility for an air brake acknowledgement? A. Class 4. B. Class 3. C. Class 2. D. Class 1. The answer is D. D. Class 1. Which of the following is not one of the four conditions for having Alberta's hours of service legislation waive the daily log requirement? A. The work shift does not exceed 15 hours. B. The driver starts and ends the work shifts at the same place. C. The driver stays within a 160 km radius of the home terminal. D. There are fewer than 8 hours of on-duty driving time during a shift. The answer is D. There are fewer than 8 hours of on-duty driving time during a shift. In order to turn right in a big vehicle safely, it's advised that you A. Drive well into the intersection before starting the turn. B. Allow your rear wheels to mount the curb if there is no obstruction. C. Allow for high speed off tracking to counteract the centrifugal force. D. Veer into the left lane before making your turn to give yourself more space to turn. 
The answer is A, drive well into the intersection before starting the turn. During a pre-trip inspection, which of the following belts should you inspect? A, alternator belt. B, water pump belt. C, power steering belt. D, all the above. The answer is D. All the above. How many people must be seated in a commercial vehicle for it to qualify as a bus under the Traffic Safety Act? This includes the driver. A. 12. B. 10. C. 15. D. 20. The answer is B. 10. Which of the following statements about lengthy vehicles is false? A. Drivers of LCV should allow for maximum following distance. B. The heaviest trailer should always be hooked up directly to the tractor. C. The maximum speed limit for drivers of long combination vehicles should never be more than 100 km per hour. D. In order to be issued with a longer combination vehicle driver certificate, a driver must not have had any prior moving violations. The answer is D. In order to be issued with a longer combination vehicle driver certificate, a driver must not have had any prior moving violations. Which of the following statements about preventive maintenance plans is incorrect? A. Small defects discovered during an inspection do not need to be reported to the carrier. B. On-road inspections received from an enforcement officer must be reported to the carrier. C. Every driver is responsible for carrying out inspections required by the owner and required by legislation. D. Leased vehicles are not exempt from the requirement to follow an established preventative maintenance plan. The answer is A. Small defects discovered during an inspection do not need to be reported to the carrier. When does an air brake Q, endorsement become required? A. Small defects discovered during an inspection do not need to be reported to the carrier. B. On-road inspections received from an enforcement officer must be reported to the carrier. C. When driving a single motor vehicle registered as a farm vehicle. D. When taking the road test for a Class 3 license with a single motor vehicle with three axles. The answer is. What is the maximum amount of time allowed by Alberta's hours of service laws for a driver to deliver a daily log to the employer? A. 10 days. B. 15 days. C. 20 days. D. 30 days. The answer is. C. 20 days. Which of the following is not a necessary component of the safety plan for a carrier? A. Instructions for the use of safety equipment. B. Policy and procedures related to driver training responsibilities. C. Daily evaluation of each driver's knowledge of existing safety laws. D. Retention of complete records for each driver in accordance with regulations. The answer is. C. Daily evaluation of each driver's knowledge of existing safety laws. Which of the following claims regarding driving passenger cars is true? A. If you have a Class 4 license, you can operate a vehicle with a maximum seating capacity of 24, excluding the driver. B. If you have a Class 2 license, you can operate a motor vehicle that has a seating capacity of no more than 24 people. C. If you have a Class 4 license, you cannot operate a vehicle with a seating capacity of more than 15 people, excluding the driver. D. None of above. The answer is. A. If you have a Class 4 license, you can operate a vehicle with a maximum seating capacity of 24, excluding the driver. A safety fitness certificate is necessary for drivers of tractors outside of Alberta if the tractor weighs more than. A. 4,000 kg. B. 4,500 kg. C. 5,000 kg. D. Safety fitness certificates are only required for trucks and trailers. The answer is. B. 4,500 kg. To make a left turn safely in a large vehicle, it is recommended that you. A. Use engine compression to control your speed during the turn. 
B. Use a fixed hand steering method to maintain control of the vehicle. C. Merge into the farthest right as soon as your turning arc is complete. D. Ensure a wide enough turning arc to allow the vehicle to off-track on left side without crossing the center line. The answer is D. Ensure a wide enough turning arc to allow the vehicle to off-track on left side without crossing the center line. Which lights wouldn't be present at the back of a bus? A. White flashing strobe light. B. Clearance and marker lights. C. Alternating amber and red flashing lights. D. All the above. The answer is. D. All the above. What type of discipline could be imposed on a carrier for disregarding a written safety program? A. Charges laid in court. B. Designation as a high-risk carrier. C. Mandatory completion of a special safety course. D. Immediate loss of license to operate that type of vehicle. The answer is. A. Charges laid in court. Which of the following individuals is not required by provincial legislation to obtain an SFC? A. Farmers. B. Taxi drivers. C. Ambulance drivers. D. Any carrier that does not transport dangerous goods. The answer is. A. Farmers. It is critical to verify the following when performing a pre-trip inspection on a truck tractor or three-axle vehicle. A. That first drive axle tires have a tread depth of no more than 1.6 mm. B. That the slack adjuster moves at least a few inches when you pull on it. C. That the axle assembly has not brakes, cracks, holes, broken seals or bends. D. That with the fifth wheel coupling there is visible space between the plate and the apron. The answer is. C. That the axle assembly has not brakes, cracks, holes, broken seals or bends. When performing a pre-trip inspection on a vehicle equipped with air brakes, you should. A. Calibrate the air lines. B. Measure the pressure. C. Check the temperature. D. Ensure there are no cuts, abrasions or cracks in the airlines. The answer is. D. Ensure there are no cuts, abrasions or cracks in the airlines. Which of the following is accurate regarding a vehicle with a 10,000 kg registration that is only used in Alberta? A. Federal law applies because the vehicle is weighing in excess of federally designated threshold. B. According to provincial law, the carrier must obtain a safety fitness certificate because of the weight of the vehicle. C. If the carrier wished to tow a trailer weighing 2,000 kilograms, he, she would be required to obtain a safety fitness certificate. D. The driver is not required to obtain a safety fitness certificate for the reason that the vehicle is not being operated outside of the province. The answer is. C. If the carrier wished to tow a trailer weighing 2,000 kilograms, he, she would be required to obtain a safety fitness certificate. The low speed off tracking is A. The driver makes a right turn. B. Is when the rear tires pull outward from the steering path. C. Is when the rear tires are pulled inward of the steering path. D. Is when centrifugal force is greater than traction when entering a curve. The answer is C is when the rear tires are pulled inward of the steering path. When performing a pre-trip inspection on the power steering pump and hose, look for A. Cleanliness B. Proper alignment C. Adequate tension D. Leaks and fluid level The answer is D. Leaks and fluid level Which of the below claims regarding a carrier's safety plan is true? A. Each driver should receive training specified in the company's safety plan and know how to perform their duties properly and safely. B. Experienced drivers do not need to receive as much training in defensive driving, load security, and trip inspections as newer drivers. C. Adequate tension. D. Leaks and fluid level. The answer is A. Each driver should receive training specified in the company's safety plan and know how to perform their duties properly and safely. What does a Class 1, Class 2, 
or Class 4 Licenses Condition Code of S. Mean. A. The driver has obtained a safety fitness certificate. B. The driver has completed the school bus driver improvement program. C. The driver has been authorized to operate a vehicle carrying oversized loads. D. The driver has qualified to tow a semi-trailer from a motor vehicle with three or more axles. The answer is. B. The driver has completed the school bus driver improvement program.